Okay, we're back. This is part three of the workshop number 25. We left off at MFL5 list. So the next uh, coding exercise is here. Okay, again, we're going to open it with idle. Okay, so let's take a look here. Some of this, sorry about that. Make this a little wider. Whoops. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, this is uh, what we call modifying a list. Now, uh, we just look at what a list is. Um, and these are some different things you can do with a list, okay? And again, where you see the three uh, quotes, okay? This is all commented out, so, but these are some of the things we're going to be working with. So, append, of course, means to add to. The len, L-E-N, is if you want to count the length of a, uh, of a list, basically. That's what that piece of code does. Pop will remove the last item in the list. Okay. Extend will just add one list to another list. And DEL, delete, will delete an item. Okay. So what we have, okay, we have two lists, list one and list two. First list is called a bowl. Okay, that's a variable, and the list name, and that has three items, pear, orange, and an apple. Now remember, if it's a list, it's in brackets. By the way, that is next, on the keyboard, it's next to the P, okay? Um, the brackets are below, actually the braces, I think you call them braces, and the brackets are above. Um, and the second list is called box. Okay, again, some brackets. And we have chips, dip, and beer. Okay, sounds like a football game. Okay, so remember these are what? Let me get rid of that. Okay, this is a string. They're in parentheses and they need to each be separated by a comma. Okay, so we have these two lists. Now we want to print bowl. So if we execute and render the print command, it's going to print pear, orange, and apple. Okay, that statement is going to just print that. Now if we want to amend the bowl, meaning we want to add something to it, we go bowl dot append. And then in parentheses, what we want to add, in this case, banana. So when we run the program, this command is going to add banana to that list. And then we can run the print command again, and you'll see the full extended new list. And it will have, whoops, excuse me, it will have, <clears throat> once we run this, it will have pear, orange, apple, and banana. Okay. Then if we want to check out the length, we can go print the length of the list, okay, it's going to be oh, 1, 2, 3, okay, the index is 3, okay, so, and then we can print that, okay. Now if we want to get rid of something in that list, so now we're going to the next list box, so we're going to print box, but we're going to pop, dot pop, that means it's going to list, it's going to pop out the last item, beer, which is the most important item. Okay, so we're going to be left with chips and dip. I should have had, I should have popped out the dip. <laughs> and then we'll print the new list. Okay, so let's check that out. Okay, now that looks busy, but let's see what we have. Let's move it over here. Okay, so we have this, this, a length. OK, 
Okay, so let's just real quickly run through it. We have these two items, these two lists, then we're going to print bowl. So it should print those three, and that's what we have. Okay, next, um, we're going to amend, we're going to add two, so it adds banana. Okay, now we're going to check out uh, the length of bowl. And it's four. I was wrong. It's actually four items. So, I, I, excuse me for that. That was a uh, mistake. Um, so, we want the length of the bowl. So, it's actually four, meaning four items. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, we want to print the list called box. Okay. And so, of course, chips dip and beer. That's the name of that list. Now we're going to get rid of the last. Okay, get rid of the last um, pop, which is beer. So, it takes away beer and then leaves chips and dip. Okay, um, and I think there's actually one more. Let me just scroll down here. Yep, okay. Sorry about that. So we have Okay. So we left off with it popped the beer, okay? So it got rid of beer. And let me see so you guys can see this. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now we can see the whole thing. Okay, so we left off. So, just to recap, we have this list, okay, and this little command, this program, this piece of the program is going to get rid of beer. Okay, so it gets rid of beer and leaves chips and dip. Okay, now. Now we want to, this piece of the code is going to extend, it's going to take bowl and extend it with, it's going to add on box. Okay, so it's basically, basically going to put those two lists together as one. And sure enough, here we are. Okay. And remember, um, we unloaded beer, so that's not part of that extended list okay so we got rid of beer so it it extends it adds bowl and then what's left of box okay now the last we want to delete something delete bowl and we're going to delete the index one okay so if we look at bowl it's going to go to the second here is uh, let's see just open this up a little bit. So here. So delete is going to delete index 2. Okay. So I have a little note here. Delete options include delete bowl 2 to 4. This deletes index 2, 3, but not 4. That's just a little extra add-on. So bowl is going to delete one. Okay, so we added it. Remember that's so if we look at this, okay, that's the full list. Pear, orange, apple, banana, chips, and dip. And it says it's going to delete one. Pear is zero. Orange is one. Apple is 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it deletes orange, leaving the rest. And then it prints bowl. Okay, so a lot, a lot happening on that uh, little chunk of code. So just review that again. Okay. Next, miscellaneous list. Let's open that up. Now, 
there's really no much of a code here. Okay, this is more of an FYI. Open this up. Okay, so essentially, with within Python, um, there's a couple different kinds of list. Okay, one is a list. A list, technically, if it's a list, it can be changed. Okay and it is denoted by brackets okay that's a bracket a tuple you might hear that a tuple is something that's like a list but cannot be changed it's immutable okay and that will be denoted by parentheses okay then a set is a set of words or something that is unique and it's denoted by braces okay those are called braces and the last is a dictionary, and that uses a key and a value, okay? And that's also denoted by braces. So this is really not, you know, any code to run per se. So, but let me give you an example. So the first, a list, B is a list, we're calling B a list, and that includes John, Steve, John, Mike, and Steve, okay? we can change that you can delete add to modify etc the next c that's a tuple okay and it's in parentheses so here are the parentheses nuts hammer nails and screwdriver because it's a tuple it's immutable we cannot change it okay that's that's its distinguishing characteristic next e is a set so it's a unique set of values, okay? And it's denoted by braces. So John, maybe myself, I live in Marlboro, and I'm a father, okay? That, that's, that's a set of words that describe something or someone, okay? And the last, dictionary. Uh, just a little typo here on your text file. Um, there's a comma that I did not remove, okay? So if you see a comma, just get rid of that. That was a typo. My apologies. Okay, so G is a dictionary, and it uses a key and a value. So the key is name. The value is John. Okay, so, that, so it's a semicolon. This is all going to be in parentheses. Then we do a comma for the next... Uh, set of key and value. So we have hair is a key, value is brown. Okay, next the key is height, the value is 5.9 feet. Okay, so we have three sets this, two, three, and that's considered a dictionary. Okay, now I just did. A print statement so we can print these out if you want and there you go okay so that's your list okay your tuple your set and your dictionary okay okay that's a dupe okay okay next Next, we get into what they call the else if, and this sometimes dr brings up a little confusion. Um, but let's we'll get through it. So don't don't worry about it. Let me stretch this out. Okay, so you don't see anything in the back. Okay, all right. So to start off, again. Three quotes. This is a comment out. This is just explaining what we're doing. So we have the if statement. We have the elif, which is a combination of else and if. And then we have the else. So in layman's term, the best way to explain this is the if statement is if is when you want to do something. So if says do this if that okay if 
that doesn't happen, then elif. Then if not, then do this. If both of those aren't met, then you'd go to the else statement. Otherwise, do this. Okay, so that's, that's sort of the layman's term of what that means. And we'll look, at a, we'll look at a little piece of code and it will help explain what that means. Okay, so here we go. Um, just to start, this is, these, these are comments. Now I did this because this, you need to indent. When you have this phrase, you need to indent. And this needs to go to the flush to the left, and then in, indent again, flush to the left, indent, and so forth. Okay, if you don't do that, it, it's not going to work because these, where it's indented, that's nested within the line above it. Okay, so that's just a little explanation. Okay, so what we have here is. A variable called num and um that equals an integer input it's asking you to enter a number okay so the and this really starts getting into programming so that's that's a statement so you're asking for input from the user but you're going to qualify that if num whatever that person inputs is greater than five you're going to print number exceeds. You're going to print that phrase. Okay. Otherwise, meaning elif, if the number is less than five, you're going to you're going to print number is less than five. And the third condition means else print the number five. Because if you think about it, there are three options. It's greater than five less than five or it's actually five okay so that 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 creates those three scenarios the if the elif and the else okay now we can take it one step further let's say we have if the number is t greater than 10 and the number is less than 12 you're going to print the number is good. Okay, of course that would be 11. The next little nugget is if the number is equal to 4 or the number is equal to 6, you're going to print number is 4 or 6. Okay, so it has to satisfy, this has to satisfy both, this has to satisfy one or the other. Okay. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, we're going to enter a number three. Number is less than five. Okay, let's clear that and we'll run this again. Enter a number. Let's number six. Number exceeds. Okay, and number is four or six. Okay, let's go. Let's say number is seven, number exceeds. Okay, so just play around with that and look at the code. Okay, so I entered a seven. Okay. It's greater than five, so it prints out number exceeds, number exceeds. If I put in four, it's going to print out number is less than five. Else, meaning if all those are rejected, it's, it's got to be the number five. Okay, And then you have some additional uh, conditions. Okay. These, these are loops, okay? 
and essentially this allows you to uh, if something's going to just repeat itself and do the same thing it, it allows to use the loop the while statement so you don't have to uh, print these statements over and over again you don't have to copy code um, it, it simpl simplifies the code so um, so again what we have here loops this function will count something until it meets a condition so while it's true do this okay so that's what this really functions while as long as it's true it keeps running as soon as it's it meets that condition or doesn't it stops okay so that's that's the while loop now um, there's a big caution here because you've all heard something getting in an infinite loop well this could happen if we don't put this phrase here okay so let's let's go to the top and and just talk about it for a minute so um, we have i is one so i can be the integer okay can rep represent an integer so we're asking while this is less than four print the i print the integer so you can start wherever you want to this is set up to start at the number one so it will go to one two three and stop there because it's less than four it's not going to go to two four it'll just stop up until that point so it's going to take one okay while i is less than four print i well it's going to print the number one then it's going to start back again and go to the next number which is two two is less than four so it's going to print two it goes back again to three so it keeps doing that until it runs out of numbers now so it, it prints the i but so it doesn't go into an infinite loop you need to put this phrase here because look what it's doing we start at one okay it prints one and then it says one plus one is two so that's the next number it's going to use and then two plus one is three then it uses three so this formula kind of triggers the, the loop to continue going now if that looks a little odd you can also write it like this okay this is a shortcut personally I don't like that shortcut um, this I plus equals one the, to rewrite this it means I equals I plus one it's a cleaner way I don't I don't like that shortcut so I typically don't use it um, but if you don't do this it's going to guess what's going to happen if you don't have this it's going to go one that's less than four it's going to print one and keep printing so and if you run into an infinite loop you want to hit control C okay so let's run it like this so you can see what it looks like so again uh, it's a simple little nugget of code but it's actually kind of involved okay so just to recap integer we set it one we could have set that at anything it's going to go to one print one and then it's going to add one plus one is now two okay so it's going to use two and print two then i is two but it also goes here so two plus one is now three so it uses three and runs through that code and let's see what we get one two three okay makes sense now let's say I didn't have this I'm going to remove this for a second Put it back later now if I run this 
it's going you're going to see this infinite loop it's just going to keep on going and and and, and you know in theory would never stop until you stop your computer so check this out I'm going to run control C okay so that just that's just an that's what we you've heard of an infinite loop that's an infinite loop and the way to stop that is control C okay so let me put that back okay and save that okay let me run that again whoops Sorry about that. what happened okay what happened here Okay, so did you see what happened? That indentation was off. So in some cases, Python can be very, you know, uh, fickle with that. You know, you have to be careful. I had this, whoops. If I go here, I just did an indent. Let's see if that works. Okay, it says un unexpected indent. Okay, so it doesn't like that. Okay. So that's why some things are very, very particular. Remove, remove that space and we'll run that again. Okay, that's all cool. Good. Okay, that one's done. Uh, nested loop. Let's see what time we're doing. How we're doing at time. Okay, this is probably the last one. Um, the, these bonus ones are a little involved. I'll save those for another time. Now this one again get it's it's there's not much code, but it can be a little involved. You have to kind of think about it. Okay, so in the commented section, nested loops, loops within a loop, okay? Since it is nested, it must be indented from the loop above it, okay? This is the one, this one may be confusing at first. So this is, this is really it. We have 4i in range 1 to 4. So what it's, what it's, basically saying it's going to the range will include one two and three but not four so when you have a range it's up until that point okay so this has to be flush this is the nested loop and this has to be indented because it's 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 kind of the child of this think of this as the parent and the child okay and the print has to be indented from that. Okay, so what, let's look at this and think about what's going to happen. It's going to take an i for an integer, so it's going to go 1, 2, and 3. Those are the only integers in that code that's going to, that are going to be used. For j, that's another represent, uh, representative of a, an integer. Okay, I used up the i. Uh, but j is also for another integer. Okay, just another. I could you can use anything. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I could use v and x. I could use a and b. But the point here, you'd have to use different letters to represent an integer. But the i and j are very conventional. You will see those in most uh, coding programs. So this integer is going to go through one, two, three. This one j representing another integer is going to cycle through one, two, and three. And then we want it to print i and j. Okay? So let's think about what's going to happen. It's going to print, take i from here, the one. i is going to, it's going to take the number one. And then it's nested. It, it's child. It's going to go through the one, 
two and three. Then it's going to go back and go to the two and then two one, two two, two three of this. Then it's going to get the three and go three one, three two, three three. Okay? And then print that out. So let's check this out. Okay, so let's look at the output and let's see if that makes sense. Okay, so we have I is 1, J is 1. I is 1, J is 2. I is 1, J is 3. Then it starts, okay, so it's going the first number. Then it cycles through each of the J's. Then it goes back to the next number, which is 2, of course, and then cycles through 1, 2, and 3. Okay? So it does that for each number and then each integer here, and then prints it out. Okay? Um, so, yeah, so that, that was that. Um, you know, just as I was thinking, just a little side, side note. A lot of the code we're going over. Th these are the fundam These are the fundamentals of the language. It, it's would be similar to learning in the English language. It's learning adjectives and what they do, learning verbs, learning um, um, a preposition, a phrase, and then you start piecing all that together and write a story. Okay, so. We're, we're, in essence, learning the pieces of the whole program. Once you know enough, then you can start piecing them together and building a program. Okay? But right now, we're, we're just learning little pieces of the program. Um, so that is it. Um, like I said, we have these two at the end. They're a little more involved. I'd like to save those for a class in sight, on site. Um, if not, I'll have another remote class like this and uh, post it. So, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned a few new tips from this workshop. Of course, we will have a few more subsequent to this. Um, depending on what's, how this plays out, I may do some more at the house. But at any event, um, we'll keep going with it. And be safe and take care of